How is it going guys? I'm Andreas Furley and in today's video I'm gonna look at the Mike Postle situation. I'm doing a review here. I'm gonna put in all the links in the description below. So if you haven't watched it, if you're tuning in late to this, um, you're gonna see all the links in the description below. And now, really, and in today's video, I'm, I'm just gonna have to mute it. I probably knew this is gonna happen tuning in this live stream. I'm gonna start with something that happened in November 2018. You know, we got Chaman Burton. He basically put out a video says, saying, avoid Mike Poslin. Maybe it was a joke back then, but he turned out to be this right. Isn't Let's a have a race, this so, unfortunately for Mike P, the betting is not reopened. He elects to call, and I call behind. Top pockets. Ooh. Ooh, the wow. That was a nice jump for J Man. You are 100% correct. That was a great jump for me. Mike P checks and action is on me. Now I just need to decide what to bet into this 1K pot to hopefully keep Mike P around if he has some strong draws. I elect to bet $400 and the action is back on Mike. He tanks for quite a while before telling the table he has pocket kings and lays it down. Just knows. Oh, oh my oh. god. <laughs> and Mike is still human. He cannot read the future oh my god. regardless of what we all think. Wow. I mean, you can look at it, their reaction as well. I mean, already in November 2018, um, Mike has been on this huge killing spree. Uh, Jaman makes a video here, says avoid Mike Postle. Um, you know, he's been really early to this, but you can see in the commentators, they says he's still human. He definitely is not seeing the next future cards. So we already know this back in November 2018. And now what's happening for an entire year almost, this guy just wins almost every session he's playing in. He almost never in his life makes a mistake. Um, and we're basically, we could watch all the histories. You can basically go down on Stone's Life Poker, which you're gonna see later. You, can, you will find that YouTube channel. There's so many hand histories that I've watched. I've consumed almost 15 hours. He doesn't make mistakes. Um, and yeah, here he gets it away from the hand. It's not the most ridiculous hand because it's a protected pot because Miami Dolphins is all in here. But, uh, you know, it's just funny that Jaman already was onto something here very early. Uh, now for an entire year again, uh, not only is Mike Postle winning, you know, at an insane rate, which we're going to talk about later as well. Um, they have made it a meme for a year. I'm actually might even do a, a separate meme video unless somebody else is doing that. That's, you know, more talented at making a meme video than me. Um, but there's so many memes out there about this Mike Postle being a poker god and just running them all over and just, you know, having these live reads and people celebrating the, them, especially the commentators, of course, because it makes sense to them, you know, the views are up and the excitement is up and whatnot. Now we're jumping forward to uh, September 28th, which is just a couple of days ago. And we got Veronica, also known as Angry Pollock. She was working for Stone's Life, the show that produced um, everything, uh, you know, with these videos of my, uh, all these live streams with Mike Postle. And she basically, even before she made those tweets, she contacted people and said, you know, can you have a look at these hand histories? They seem kind of weird. You know, can you have a look at it? Because I think something's wrong here. And, um, you know, uh, also speaking about it a little bit, I mean, you know, at some point she had to basically say that she thinks that this guy might be cheating. She didn't like say the hundred percent. And it takes a lot of courage to be the first person to do this. And I know also looking at some of the answers on Twitter, she got a lot of shit for it for, from some people. And also want to address that real quickly here. You know, it's actually quite risky to put out tweets as the first person, but you know what's not risky? It's basically giving somebody shit for trying to accuse somebody of cheating because that person, you know, even though all the people who basically gave her shit for coming forward with this, and now a lot of people actually also thank her for coming forward uh, with these tweets, um, these people are never gonna get shit back for giving her shit for that, you know? These people actually took zero risks in order to maybe stand up for the, you know, innocent until proven guilty. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, in general, we should always be, you know, making uh, or calling people out right away. But, you know, when the evidence or the, the hand histories, the, you know, the probabilities adding up so much are so clear. And when you haven't put in really the work, there's so many people out there who haven't put in, uh, you know, a single hour of work into analyzing the situations. 
Um, you know, their type of work is, well, I know this guy, Mike, I've played with him. They value ever experience and feelings over hard facts or at least some kind of work which they've put in. And we got the first video here also by Veronica where she posted and basically let people know this is weird, this is weird as fuck. This is gonna be one of the biggest nuggets. We're gonna look at it right here. This end is absolutely insane. Um, it's actually muted, I think. But uh, I'm gonna comment on it a little bit if it's muted. So maybe we're gonna see a tone or we're gonna hear a tone at some point. So, you know, this Scott. This is the second time this puzzle has done this weird hefty raise, but we're gonna see comment there, but the quality is not really that good. So I'm gonna see what's up here. Like this, this Scott guy puts in some really big aggression, right? I mean, I don't know what he's doing. He has 9-7 high. He has basically nothing, but he wants this pot, you know? We're gonna see in his hand is where he wants to win this pot. And yeah, he is doing it around, but I've played with a lot of, you know, guys or sometimes just playing for fun and they just wanna win the pot. And I mean, you just can't know whether they actually do have a value hand or some sort of a medium strong hand or a bluff or whatnot. But here we have the flop go check check and now on the turn, this was multi-way and somebody had hold, uh, hold, was holding pocket tens. Now it goes bet 430, raise 1.3K and now Scott puts in a three bet on the turn, which almost never happens in poker. It's one of the strongest moves. This is bet three bet. You know, Postle, who is jokingly called a Postle here, which, I mean, not a mean thing, guys. Um, puts in a race to 1.3k and Scott makes it 3k to go. At this point, I don't recall a single time, like, okay, back in the days of 2006, people have been back clicking and shit, but I don't remember that I've ever four bet clicked on somebody on the turn um, as a bluff. Because I wasn't really involved in this back click wars, but this is absolutely insane, even as a hand in isolation. And like, even this hand history alone, if somebody came forward and said, hey man, this is weird, you know, can you have a look at this? Um, is this guy cheating maybe? I think this is already totally legit by this. I mean, maybe not. Maybe just the individual hand history is just a little bit too much. It just could be like a fun play or they have played a lot with each other. But you know, it's already a little bit suspicious here, you know? And the problem is if you spend hours and hours watching these videos, you're going to see like dozens of these examples, you know? And now we can see Puzzle putting in the four bet to 5k and this guy obviously now has to fold all in pairs like put in like 3k with nine high now you know he just has to go out you know get away quickly from his hand um there's maybe some more hands in there but i want to move on quickly and i go through the entire review i just want to uh, let uh, people know what's happened if people are coming to this late and i don't want to spend like 10 hours going to this and see what's up so next up, and again, it's gonna be all in the description below for you to basically check out, is gonna be the two plus two thread. Um, two plus two thread, it's now, I think 65 pages long. Uh, there's, you know, first of all, the opening tweets and Joe Ingram really tuning in very early into this, uh, basically looking at a lot of hand histories, a lot of handers are posted here. Um, you know, people, basically looking, okay, what is he doing? Why is he doing these things? You know, people in the investigation mode, uh, especially Joe Ingram, and he's gonna be up soon as well with some of his first um, content pieces. Now, next up is gonna be Stone's Live Poker. Um, I think I'm, I'm trying to do this chronologically and I think this is how it went down. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, just let me know if I'm not doing it chronologically, um, then I can maybe correct something. But uh, Stone's Life Poker basically says, earlier this year an accusation was made that player was cheating our game. We conducted a full investigation and found no evidence that any cheating had occurred. Um, Stone's live stream remains a secure poker streaming platform. These recent allegations are completely fabricated. Like this tweet alone, like if we're talking accountability here, they have to be held accountable for this kind of tweets. I mean, what the fuck? 
And you know, if you know all the circumstances, I'm gonna even show more stuff and really, really uh, worrying stuff, uh, in, even in isolation, but all together, it's like super clear uh, Mike Postler was cheating. Um, but then putting this tweet out, like how do we even, on what is this tweet based? Like this needs an apology, like when we see all what we are gonna see in, in this video right alone. Um, and then, you know, one of the commentators and uh, I'm not sure like exactly, you know, um, what all, the, all these other titles are in, in, in Stone's Life Poker, um, but Justin Corrett is definitely one of the, um, you know, guys who has a lot of responsibility in Stone's Life Poker, basically is backing it up. And um, he's basically saying it a bit differently. He says the reputation of my team and an exciting, fun player now being publicly mocked. This is how his statement was um, back in September, which was a couple of days ago. You know, this is not, this is very recent still, where where Justin just makes yeah, well, this is just mobbing. You know, this is there, nothing's going on. Yeah, of course, nothing's going on. Now we got Joey Ingram joining the scene. He's looking at hours of footage. Actually, I think he's watched 30, 40 hours. I don't know how much uh, this man has not slept. Um, but yeah, one of his favorite hands, one of my favorite hands is this one. The flop one, check, check, check. Just remember that, okay? Okay. Any good? Whoa, 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 whoa. What, can we hit this? No, not quite, not quite. No, no, She's a straight no, flush. Seriously, uh, seriously, this is ridiculous. Mike has enough flush. Ridiculous. Now, the, Obviously, the, you can't lose it. You can't flush. just Possible, fold this hand, right? So Apostle's not going to go broke. Yet. Right. Okay. You know, he's going to lose a big one, but, but, but he's not going to go broke. This commentator yet. knows he's not going to go broke. How the, the guy's got $675, of course he's not going to go fucking broke. I just want to point out, this is another time tonight we are in the Apostle zone. Guys, listen, I'm telling you, they have graphics for this shit. First of all, this was the fourth, I think it's the fifth stream I watched. Every stream's like this. I, I, you guys got to understand. I watched three hours earlier of one stream. Every stream so far is just like this. I mean, this thing has been going for an entire year, the puzzle zone and all these freaking memes, and nobody was actually saying something publicly until September 28th. I mean, the fuck? It's these same hands, the There's same the way. They, they, they all head. do the Pasta same. Got the nut freaking flush, and he's up against eight ten of diamonds. Unfortunately for Pasta, though, he's probably going to lose on this hand. I mean, how does he get away from here? Besides the board oh. pairing, this lady can't no, he, believe she's fucking shocked he'd even lose here. How does he lose? He will though. He, he Pasta, he will. He can make that fold because because obviously, like we're gonna either see a raise now. Did you hear him, the commentator? He can make that fold. He can make it fold. He has seen shit like this. He has seen more than this that he can even make that statement. And you know, speaking about the commentators, I mean, I mean, it's embarrassing. It's just an embarrassment to poker commentating in general. I mean, I'm not saying they were in in this and they were cheating with uh, Mike here, but like, it's freaking embarrassing. You're basically saying you're clueless about poker. Like that you have no idea or you're just trying to hype it up. That this guy's somehow a god. Or, I mean, what the fuck? Like, these commentators sometimes absolutely insane. Now are on the river. So luckily for Possel, this pot got, this pot was not bloated. There could have been so much action on the flop. There he leads 125 here. Or Small bet. Faraz just calls. Just bet call and Faraz Watch this bullshit. Mike off the hook. Remember the flop was check check, right? So could the guy have jack you know, seven nine seven? Sure, right? All the good cards, uh, except for he doesn't. The board is 550 fair. behind. The pot's 430 is with enough flush, right? 550 behind. He doesn't have to have ace high diamonds. Look at this bullshit. He have a lot of hands that are that would call, but Firas, you know, he just uses to just call. So now, you know, we he are. He checks. Apostles, this guy bets one. Has played this so slowly. He bets incredibly small. He knows. He's like he's six. Tiny. He bets 140. Okay. If it's 140. The guy's got 410 behind. Pot now we look at his acting job. He's gonna call? stare at him. No. He's the nut fucking flush. Look at this. So Mike gets let off. The oh wait a minute. Is he gonna raise? Oh, he is gonna go for a thin min value raise. Or maybe not. A thin min value raise. I the guy's got the fucking nut flush. Is this PLO? PLO. I can understand. Maybe you, you, you check call here, right? Because the guy might have seven eight. Turn your hand into a bluff. You're gonna get called by worse. But the guy could have a ten, right? What if he's got a ten? What if he's got a flush? Ross could shove here easily. It's about a pot size shove. So. What the fuck are these commentators oh, talking about? The guy's got 410 behind. Are they can't read what's happening here? The guy bets one fourth pot, and now he's sighing and, and, and fucking. He just calls! Is that a min click? 
No, he just calls. He just calls! Yeah. And so possibly I mean, yeah, I found this hand ridiculous. Especially, like, uh, a friend of mine, he's told me, you know, uh, combinatorically, he thinks more of six combos being uh, ahead of ace, queen of diamonds, and that a Thai player wouldn't have, like, so many combos that I've assumed being behind. Um, uh, so that this is a justifiable check on the river. But combined with all the times that he has check race and thinly value race and bluff race on the river, uh, he just has to extend his value range and obviously check race here as well. And he's probably you know, just, you know, in combination with all the other hands is outright cheating. Now, Joe Ingram's stream number one has been five hours. It's gonna be in the description below as well. Let's move on to the next piece. We got Mike, Mike on Twitter defending himself. Like, and one of his best pieces of evidence that he was not cheating is this one. This is Mike's okay, defense. This is the guy who's accused of cheating. Hashtag standard. Totally. And he bets 1100. So this is weird for Augie, right? Because you have top pair, you have some kicker issues. There's, you have like no redraw of any sort. And, and you're Postle, facing Mike Possel. And you're, face, and, and you're facing Possel. Possel just makes it work. It's so sick. Possel's like, ah, whatever. I'll pick up a little bit of equity. And I mean, this is his defense, you know? It's like, I made... What is he saying here? What is he saying here? Why is he not cheating? He's basically saying, well, if I was cheating, why would I try to move... Why would I uh, try to move somebody off top pair here? Like, to me... This guy, Postel, especially after even after you know thinking about this whole thing for more than ten hours and making videos about it, I think he's just. I mean, this is a sick brag by him. This is just another. I don't know. Um, this is another brag. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I bet like another eight high semi bluff here, and now this guy folded. But why would I ever do that? Why would I ever try to do that? Why would I ever be so good? Or you know, it's just absolutely insane. Like, how do we make this as a defense? Um, yeah, just absolutely insane by him. And there's more stuff like that that he's posting and barely anything that, you know, he, he one time he calls 50 big blinds being wrong. Now, next up is gonna be my own video and I'm gonna also show you my favorite one from my own video uh, where I comment on one of my favorite hands. Um, but yeah, hard on the button bets, 180 on the flop. And at this point, if you have players behind versus a multi way bet, even if you were last to act, it's not going to be a good situation for your kings. Like if you're last to act and you know, you're facing this one five way bet, you might even consider folding against one player. But the fact that he has multiple players behind him makes this flop call so atrocious. It just seems like this guy has no idea. Like if, if you just show me this guy of, of Mike here, I would say this, this guy has no idea about poker. Like if I see this one hand and he's not drunk or whatever, if you tell me this hand history, you know this is not a quality player because it's so atrocious to call here on the flop with multiple players left to act. It is if he knew that nobody hit the ace. And in five foot poker, this is not a thing. You just don't know what the other players has. It's so incredibly hard to observe multiple players and you just don't solve read people. You don't have a read on four players at the table. It's just not happening. No way. And in multiplayer poker, you have to be quite snug and uh, as a little bit of a strategic advice, you just have to fold fairly good looking hands like second pair here with a pair of kings. Um, his flop call is atrocious and surprisingly nobody has him beat and he seems to have the best hand. Like how would it even is the, is the case here? Um, most of the time he has very little equity because somebody is an ace and he's just totally fucked. Uh, somebody could like, all the other hands, the draws, the queen 10, the 10, 8, they... Yeah, in retrospective, I went a little bit too long about this hand history. I mean, it's just an it's just incredibly atrocious call. Um, just uh, because you don't see the flop play, he check called flop pay, fl on the flop five way, having three people left, yeah. And then they overcall and he check calls on the turn again with kings. Most atrocious play ever, um, can only be done from a fish. And then later on, this is uh, so contradictory um, to what else is out there. Then we got next up chronologically, I think before uh, Joey's second stream, we got Kevin Martin and he's out there and he's saying clear cut cheating. Mike has access to whole card information in the videos, never bluffs into a hand, always gets away from the minimum, device in hand under the table. 
this criminal activity, what are you going to do about this? And then he's basically attacking some people. And, um, you know, some more history and history is coming up here. Um, this has been a little bit surprising to me, you know, Kevin now um, being off Twitch poker, but I guess he still loves poker. And, you know, he's taking a stand here. You know, he's not, you know, he's not just waiting for 100% evidence or, you know, um, court evidence to be out there, but he's taking, you know, he's making a statement here uh, relatively early, I would say. Then we got second stream from Joey, and I have my favorite part of Joey's second stream here. Okay. The guy is a god and runs like a god continuously. Okay. Uh, the guy has the most insane feel for every situation I've ever seen. I keep in mind, this isn't just this stream, this is all the hands I've watched, right? Most insane feel for every situation, right? Okay. I don't see, I don't, I don't see, right? I don't see, those are our four, right? Okay, those are our four. Let's go with the other ones, right? The guy is a god and is also cheating, okay? By himself. The guy is a god and is cheating with someone else, okay? Who could those people be? Okay. Someone random we've never seen. Okay. Uh, somebody we see in charge. Okay. Someone in production. Okay. All right. Someone at the table. Okay. Combination of this, right? Are we missing people? All right. The guy is good and is cheating by himself. We'll go through the same ones, okay. All right, right? I feel like we have, these are the options, right? What other options am I missing? Am I missing, maybe I'm missing something else? Is my god everything? The guy's a god, the guy's a fucking dog and runs like a god continuously. The guy is a god and runs like a god continuously. The guy has the most insane feel for every situation I've ever seen. Combination. I mean, I don't see how a lot of people defending him, even just seeing, seeing this, like, you know, you have to literally take a position and you can only take one of these positions. He outlines it really well. Like there's not anything outside of this, you know, that um, could be true. Um, you have to go for something and something has to be true, right? So... Therefore, what are all these defenders going to say? Like, yeah, they're going to say this guy's a god. He's just a super good poker player. But then we have all this contradictory evidence for him being a god or a good poker player by him making some absolute donk plays. So, how do we know? It's just too contradictory, you know? So, this is the second uh, Joe Ingram video. It's also in the description below. Um, putting in another six hours. Um, this guy doesn't sleep. And then next up, we're gonna we have actually all the sessions. Somebody posted this on two plus two, and we can for the first time see an estimate of the profit, um, and it's two hundred and fifty grand. I mean, you can make this sort of money. You can make this sort of money in two five and one three if you play for a very long time. But he played two hundred and seventy seven hours. That's nothing. You know, I could play that in six weeks in Vegas if I actually grind it harder than I did this summer. 277 hours like a summer of grind. You know, he is only playing four hour sessions here the whole time. These are short sessions. If I played, so if, I, if I'm playing four hour sessions, you want to see my results? When I play four hour sessions, I never win this much. I go me once in a while, but it just doesn't happen. And I have quite some experience in live poker as well. If you play four hour sessions, a lot of the times you just don't play hands and nothing happens. Even if you play like a loosey goosey style, uh, you just don't have these swings and you especially are not going to win um, 4,000 big blinds and stuff like he did sometimes. Um, so this is basically the overview. It also is really great because we can see the date on the left. We can use some uh, really specific notes that this guy has made. We can see that in summer um, between uh, here in the WSOP, he has that observation that you know it hasn't been going so well during the WSOP. And apparently during the WSOP, uh, Justin wasn't around, whether that is uh, gonna be the really uh, problem, the real problem that he didn't match. We, we don't know that yet uh, for sure, but all, you know, we got the results. 
I'll go back to joining Rem, who has basically, I think, reposting something, um, or I'm not sure if he made it up himself, but this is basically poker win rates talk. We can see all the people in, in poker and what win rates they might have in big blinds per hundred. Um, in online poker, you know, losing players here, losing at a very fast rate. You can see losing players are losing faster than the winning players are winning. This is because of rake, most likely. And we can see that the biggest winners in poker have about 100 big blinds per 100, and I guess a bit of a larger sample than 277 hours. And then we got Pot Ripper, which uh, in 2007 was super using in online poker at 500 big blinds per 100. Now, this was clear, clear cheating, super using, you know, knowing other people's holo cards. Now we got Pot Ripper with almost playing every hand, and then we got now Mike Postel, who surprisingly doubles the Pot Ripper. And here, you know, if you haven't believed in everything that was before, it's over. You know, this is statistically impossible. It's even less than one in a billion to do this. It's just, it's just, yeah. Uh, unless you believe in a number that is one in one in, and with like dozens of zeros and, and that's exactly what was happening with Postal. Yeah, maybe you can make a case for that. But this is also, I hope that in court they will uh, basically, um, yeah, they will give him jail time for this, you know. This is just too much of an evidence if we can prove that he actually won this much and didn't rebuy and shit, but I, I don't believe in that either. Now, we got Doug Polk chiming in, we got his video, and my favorite piece of his video. Paralibus vulgaris, that shows that Postle's brother was actually in the booth and was telling some childhood stories about Mike. Let's take a look. So I want to go back to the Wheel of Destiny at the oh, yeah. roller ring. The wheel. So there's always different things. And it was usually anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar to spin the wheel. So my brother had the wheel perfectly lined up. And my brother put some quarters behind the wheel. Oh, so there was what a cheat. <laughs> Unbelievable. So when you spun it, you would always get so close to the five dollar bill. Because the was deal this, was Was this sanctioned by your dad? Oh yeah. My dad was all like my brother's like this is this is what he said. He goes, Well, the wheel just doesn't roll very well, so I gotta put some weights on it to counterbalance it uh -huh. so it rolls well. Yeah. So most of the time when you roll, probably like ninety percent of the time, it always stopped one away from the five dollar bill. Oh, you were so close, oh, you know. Man, like and it'd be, it'd be the worst prize ever. So my brother would win half the winnings, whatever he gave out. So my brother would win, you know, usually make like 30 or 40 bucks, you know, wow, from doing it. Wow, what but an angle shooter. It was so fun. Yeah, you know, there's, if there's an angle for my brother to do it, he'll, he'll do it. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, nothing like a yeah. nice scam. Oh. I mean, his own brother said he was cheating in his childhood. I mean... Combined with the fact that he just went on the most insane heater, now we're gonna get rid of that one in a trillion, whatever, how many zeros times is that he's been on an upswing. You know, his brother saying that makes it even another one in a million less likely. I mean, multiply it by that number than we had already before. Um, yeah, I don't believe in these miracles. Now, with these couple of things, you know, and this is, by the way, all the evidence with his brother. This is not chronological. The, 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 it's just Doug's video is in a chronological order. You can see it's October 2nd. Uh, we're, that's already yesterday um, before I went to bed, I guess. Uh, and, but he actually obviously uh, looked at all the evidence that he could find. And um, yeah, his, his brother basically said he was a cheater. That's what we had. Not even Engelschild. Engelschild is totally the wrong word, um, what he described there. I uh, was basically cheating. Now we're coming to the post evidence part. And now it gets kind of funny. You can spot these assholes by watching the way they bet. Like this guy. He's betting lavender chips at 500 each with only one little problem. He's always guessed right. If he wasn't so fucking greedy, he'd have been tough for the spot. Now here's this guy reading the dealer's whole card and signaling his buddy at this table. And that's just what these hustlers look for. They cruise from casino to casino looking for weak dealers the way lions look for weak antelope. Turns out this guy and his fucking pals 
They were knocking this place dead for years. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Ah! There it is. That's it. There you go. No! No! I wanted everybody to know that things were changed around here. We had to make an example of these pricks that the party was over. I'm just curious. I saw you shuffling your checks with your right hand. Can you do that with both hands? No. Can't do it with both hands? No, sir. Can you do it with your left hand? Oh, I, I never tried. So you were right. Yeah. Ah! 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 Now you're going to have to learn with your left hand. I did honestly not believe when I saw this. Like, who made this? I mean, it's just... I mean, the fuck. <laughs> just ridiculous. And, and also the whole editing and, and everything. And like the whole, Because he's, he would always sit there, right? And he basically would go like, you know, his left hand here and his right hand would always be like here and he would always like look down and, and like being a righty. It's like, it's just, it's just too funny uh, to me. Um, yeah, <laughs> what has happened? And then second burn video, I would say, let's call it that way, is this one. Im Süden hat der Gegner Zossen genommen und stößt auf Stahnsdorf vor. Der Feind operiert jetzt am nördlichen Stadtrand zwischen Frohnau und Pankow. Und im Osten ist der Feind bis zur Linie lichtenberg marlsdorf Karlshorst gelangt. Mit dem Angriff Steiners wird das alles in Ordnung kommen. Mein Führer, Steiner... Steiner konnte nicht genügend Kräfte für einen Angriff massieren. Der Angriff Steiner ist nicht erfolgt. Es bleiben im Raum Keitel, Jodel, Krebs und Burgdorf. Das war ein Befehl! Der Angriff Steiners war ein Befehl! Wer sind Sie? Mein Führer, ich kann nicht zulassen, dass die Soldaten, die für Sie verbringen... Feiglinge! Verräter! Versager! Mein Führer, was Sie da sagen, ist ungeheuerlich. Die Generalität ist der Geschmeiß des deutschen Volkes. Sie ist ohne Ehre! Sie nennen sich Generale, weil sie Jahre auf Militärakademien zugebracht haben, nur um zu lernen, wie man Messer und Gabel hält. Jahrelang hat das Militär meine Aktionen nur behindert. Es hat mich gegen nur als wichtigen Widerstand in den Weg gelegt. Ich hätte gut daran getan, von Jahren alle höheren Offiziere registrieren zu lassen, wie Stalin. Ich war nie auf einer Akademie. Und doch habe ich allein, allein auf mich gestellt, ganz Europa erobert. Verräter! Von allem Anfang an bin ich so verraten und betrogen worden. Es wurde ein ungeheurer Verrat geübt am deutschen Volke. Aber alle diese Verräter werden bezahlen. Mit ihrem eigenen Blut werden sie bezahlen. Sie werden das saufen in ihrem eigenen Blut. Bitte, gerne. Jetzt beruhig dich doch. Meine Befehle sind in den Wind gesprochen. Es ist unmöglich, unter diesen Umständen zu führen. Es ist aus. Der Krieg ist verloren. Ab 
Aber wenn Sie, meine Herren, glauben, dass ich das mit Berlin verlasse, irren Sie sich gewaltig. Er jage ich mir eine Kugel durch den Kopf. Tun Sie, was Sie wollen. I mean, this, this is just so hilarious. Of course, like the German and the English, is, it's not matching like in any sense. But this is this is just too good. Like you know, the whole the whole part. Like yeah, it has it has a little bit of you know a, a black humor in it. But I mean, it's just like so, so, some of this. But Pot Ripper wouldn't have done those things. It's like you know, and then insulting like I should have played not this not this uh, Mike uh, Mike Donk. You know, I could have done it better. Why why would he for uh, ship it in with four five also against Moneymaker? Why did he make it so obvious? Like it, it's just so good, right? The the subtitles here edited that um, and that it, it exactly picked like this. You know, and basically portraying Hitler as uh, as Justin. I mean, it, it's just. Uh, Quite hilarious, I would say. All right, after that, after the burn, showing Rem, he has not had enough yet. He's still fighting, looking at hand histories. As proof that he did he not. my favorite part for the third ball with the best hand every time on the river. Favorite hand history. Sir, here's the situation. This guy, Rich, decided to three bet with seven deuce from the big blind. I have the eight six offsuit. It's a terrible hand, but I'm the biggest winner in the fucking state, so I can go ahead and make a call here because I'm going to be profitable. <laughs> And, and when the hand starts, I'm gonna play a nice fucking meme for the Apostol Apostol La Vista baby guy. Just get rid of Rich. We'll see you later. Apostol La Vista. He's. And this is just so funny, you know, the Apostle of Vista and, and then also getting like the last clip and, and with Hitler like, again. I would have made so many more memes for another year. Yeah, true. I can't, you know, I, I guess Mel, Turtle's not going to want to fold here. Turtle's got to just shoot, shoot it ace on the fold. button. Don't ever, why are we thinking about calling? What, how much does he have behind? Oh, he it's only has like 535. Five. Yeah. Just, you mean just There's going to be a Netflix hands. documentary about this guy one day. Yeah. And that's the sick part. And that's why you need such we should make that. The best poker player. Make that. Or out of line. I want to be in on this. I would like, love to be in on this, on, on the documentary. Yeah, that's, that's a real thing. Because now, well, now here we are having to fold the best hand. Uh, yeah. We'll see if he gets punished in that, uh, the flop. Heads up, two of the best. What he just folded so, there. So, you know they're going to put an eight and a seven on the flop. Watch. And the top pair, top kicker that he folded out would have been the best. Unfortunately, it's now... It has worked out in Paul's favor. Shocking, I know. Let's put up another meme of him looking like fucking Jesus. The God. His opponent inexplicably folds ace ten suited, and now he just has the best hand. And his opponent is bidding into him. And this is interesting because I almost guarantee you that Paul <laughs> is not going to go anywhere. Call with eight six, make a pair, not folding. Yeah, not folding. It's that same fluke by that's been in here for like three weeks. Honey on the turn, you need the check mark. So Rich Apostle. bets 390. You never think you have the check mark. Apostle calls. They're dead. Bring it. <laughs> they have two under cards that aren't turned. And don't, and don't have a straight draw. So Trey Morris. That's the case. And Rich has no I'll hit you up right now, brother. Telling the story. At T-Bone, sure right? You found our sketchy hand? I'm going to take a look. Three bets free. He's, he's going to put in a fat map. He's going to blow Apostle off the hand. He's going to show it. Maybe that's what Paul was freaking out. Is that your that. prediction? Oh yeah, maybe you're right. T-bone, baby. Man, you're right. You're absolutely right. How can you call right. that if you're Paul? So I guess okay. What what value hand would Rich play this way? Oh my god, I love it when the commentators start doing this. They start talking about well, like what value? Like Rich, Rich three bet preflop. He he squeezed from the big blind. It was four ways. He squeezed in a spot where he actually had little full equity because one guy had a short stack behind him. So potentially a short stack could just put him in here. So what hands would Rich theoretically play this way, right? The queen on the turn, like what would he do with this, right? Would he ever have queens? Would he ever have tens? Would he ever have queen ten? Would he ever have queen jack? Would he ever ace queen? Like, would he realistically ever have those hands? There's not a fucking chance this motherfucker would have this hand. Of course he doesn't have those hands. He has seven deuce. Let's listen to the fucking guys break this hand down. Probably. Why not? If he had two queens, he would play this way. I don't think he would slow down. And the thing is, he also knows you're playing against Possel, where, like, you know, especially Possel loves to call aggro people, and Possel stacking out chips! What in the what? 
OMG, and the thing is, they're still deep enough to have some sort of river bluff opportunity here. Paso calls 915 on the river, or on the turn, inexplicably. He has less than, what does he have left? Two quarter, 2,500 into 3,500 3, 3, here. This is sick. Now like, the board is four straighted. Four straighted. Puzzle has an eight. Your eight is garbage. Uh, Consider like Blue fan says this hand makes me think the opposite. I'm. I think he's scared of Rich knowing, or there is collusion between him and Rich. Why do you say that? I mean, the other big pot, the Ace Nine versus Ace Three, was against Rich too. But why would you? Why would? What makes you think that? Eight. Considered. Oh my God! If Rich finds some all in right here, this, this is Lenny's defense. So this is their hand. Disgusting. Also, I think. Uh, he Mike posted this too as he folded the best hand once. Oh, he man. does! Oh my god, OMG! This is gonna how work. How can it not work? How can this not how work? How can Mike call? How, I don't know how he called turn. Oh my god, I'm, I'm ready to watch the possible explosion when this seven deuce gets flipped. He's this has gotta be one of the it. best, sickest seven deuce ever. You three bet up to 375, you fight 390 in the flop. Yeah, this, is a, grand on this the is a really great bet, buddy. Great fucking bet with the set. This is like one of the most, one, this is one of the greatest plays I've ever seen. The guy squeezed seven deuce and then just bet three streets. I'm fucking inspired by the magnitude and exceptionability of this play. What an amazing play. My God, holy fuck. I cannot believe this guy possibly could have ever done such a great fucking play. My, I mean, I mean, I want to fucking jack this play off. It's such a fucking beautiful play. My God, what a still shipping. fucking and inspiring. Like Postle, who's very capable inspiring. Of doing six he already has been. He's called all oh three bets God. that in cor correctly, correctly the best hand the whole time. He still does. And it's sick that he's even. I mean, he's genuinely considering this. Yes, this he is. This isn't like just Hollywooding before a fold. Right. So be now, of course, you only are beating a stone bluff. So Mike now knows he's got the best hand. Look at him. He knows he has the best hand. I just, yeah. He knows it. Jack King. I mean, shit. I mean, I guess you're beating Ace King? Question mark? Like Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Marlon Brando, Mike Possel. Four of the best actors I've ever seen in my lifetime. How can he find a call? How can you ever find a call here? Call eight six. You're beating. You're beating like Ace Deuce. Deuce, I guess you're beating seven deuce. That's what you're beating, right? Yeah, there. you're beating I, seven, I hope you have deuce. seven deuce. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I call. You got seven deuce? Yes, I do. Yeah, we're gonna go to table talk. That's a great idea. We're gonna check this out. Yeah. Last week. Talk. That's a great idea. We're gonna check this out. Do. Yeah, we're gonna go to table talk. That's a great idea. We're gonna check this out. Could that be it? I mean, I don't. I, I just, I've never seen one of these hat things. I just find this hard to believe it's even possible. Yeah. But anything's possible with, with, with Mr. Apostle. So this is the one that they did. The, they did the heat seeking. Look how dirty this hat is. Wash your fucking hat, buddy. This is a disrespect to white hats. Oh, it could be the lighting. Never mind. It might actually be real nice and white. I don't really know. So they're alleging it's in here. The professional salutes. This is the one that they did the, the hue sensor on, right? Yeah, they did a hue sensor on this one. Yeah, there we are. This is the 
you know, third investigation stream of Joe Ingram. Um, this is where I'm going to leave off. I mean, this has been the summary of mine. This is what happened so far. What I have uh, to add to that is um, debatably there is something going on with his hat. You know, he could have something in his hat that's telling him something. This is the way he might have been cheating, uh, just getting some signals, you know, um, Whenever he had his hat and it wasn't so weird or he it didn't play with a hat, he, he apparently wasn't cheating. Um, there's certainly some more stuff uh, coming to light as we go. But this is basically the rundown of the Mike Postle or the Postle uh, Gate. Postle, why is it even Postle? Apostle. Maybe that's, that's why. Um, this is what we got. And yeah, hope this guy goes to jail. Um, cannot say more than that. For me, it's way, way, way more than enough looking at all this together. And this might not be everything in there. I hope that I uh, sufficiently provided uh, you know, everything that has happened uh, through those links here. You can all find it in the description below. And I think if you follow up on those links, um, you should actually cover most of the things, most of the entertainment. Maybe I should be making, as I said, another meme video at some point. Uh, with some Apostle memes, Apostle Zone, Apostle Jesus, Apostle, whatever they called him in the show. Um, but other than that, I think we're done here. Case closed, question mark. Otherwise, I'm going to make a part two. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video, if you like the summary. And then see you guys for the next video.